Hi everybody, Jesse here from jessiebanks.com and I don't know if you remember this, but in March of 2018 I created my first custom watercolor palette. So I had lucked out and got uh, like 300 different watercolors from a lady who was moving on to acrylic paints for, actually there was more than 300 tubes, but I paid $300 and it was like $1,500 or more dollars worth of watercolors. Um, scored a super awesome deal and built my first custom watercolor palette. Um, I've used it tons. I think everything except for the Hansa Yellow Light and the Permanent Scarlet has been refilled in this palette. Oh, and, and the French Ultramarine has, has it. So everything but like three or four of the colors in here have been refilled. I've used it a ton. Um, I've really enjoyed this palette. I've found things this palette was missing, hence my little neutrals pan here. Um, colors that I would prefer other things now. Um, I've added a few more colors to my collection, which I didn't need, but they were kind of like specific fun colors that I like to use a lot in my artwork and, and my card making and all that kind of fun stuff. So we're going to revamp this palette. So this palette had 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15 pans in it. I have picked up, again, just a cheapy little plastic palette. I do really enjoy these. I know lots of people are like, I want ceramic and I want metal tins and whatever else. But I really enjoy these. Um, the downfall is going to be, I don't know if I'm going to be, I don't think I'm going to be able to get the colors out. I will still use this palette until it's all cleaned out and gone. But I wanted to film this video just to kind of change things up, um, show what I did then versus what I would do now, and what I've kind of learned along the way about my style and the colors I like and what I need in my palette. Um, like for example, with neutrals and things, I did get a com couple comments on the original video of building my first watercolor palette that were like, well, you have no neutrals. And I'm like, I can mix them. And yeah, I can, but I don't. So <laughs> these palettes have 20 wells in them. So I can put five more colors in, which frees up a little bit more room. But I may end up with some empty ones. I'm going to be a little more choosy um, to colors that I use and things of that nature. And it's going to be able to do people and all of that fun stuff. So I will pull out all of my watercolors and we'll be right back. Okay, so I started by pulling out the colors out of my stash that I know are going to go in my new palette. These are colors I reach for all the time. I have them in almost every palette, including my big tin that I use, uh, like my butcher's tray and all of that stuff. So what I pulled out was Nickel Azo Yellow, Quinacridone Gold. Now Nickel Azo Yellow is a color that's used in the new pigment the new version of Quinacridone Gold from Daniel Smith and including most of the other brands where they have dual pigments. I still have the original PL49. I'm putting both in my palette. I use them both for different things. This one's more bright and brilliant. I love the earthy tone you get with the depth of Quinacridone Gold. Quinacridone Coral, which if you've watched my watercolor videos, I think it's in every one. Indian Throne Blue, which is a nice a dark blue. Of course, a Thalo Blue Green Shade as well as phthalo green blue shade. So these six colors are definitely going into my next palette. So I'm just gonna set them to the side here, up at the top. I'm gonna go like that. Yellow, red, green, blue. So that gives us six to start with. Um, the way I store my watercolors is, let's start with yellows here. Um, I have, these are photo, a big box that they all fit in and they're like photo containers. These are from um, Michael's. I think they're their own recollections brand but I keep all of my colors kind of sorted in there instead of having to rifle through a giant basket like I was before. So I'm just going to open these up here and go through them and pull out the different colors that I'm considering adding to my palette and I'm just going to kind of do this on a time lapse because it's going to be painstaking. Okay, so I figured instead of playing some music while I go through all of these watercolors, I would jump on and have a little chat with you guys. I filmed this video before I went to Las Vegas in November, and so it's been like over a month that I've, or about a month that I've been using this palette now. Um, I love it. It turned out really, really well. <laughs> As you saw from my little captions before, no, not every of those six colors made it. I left them out. I'm okay with it. The palette actually is still very, very functional with me. I do have a video coming up of me doing a card with them and having a little talk about what I've discovered and how much I like it and etc, etc. Um, 
it's definitely a big change from the first palette I did, where I kind of tried to base it upon just colors I liked and then having a warm and cool of all of the primaries in order to have a well-rounded palette. But a well-rounded palette really is no good if it's not colors you're going to use, which is what I learned. But everybody has to start somewhere. So we're just organizing all of these and I went through and pulled out a bunch I want and I will be back in the next time lapse. Okay, so I'm back. Um, I have 34 colors pulled out, plus the six that are going back for sure. So we are going to have to tear this down quite a bit. Um, I'm going to start by looking through this and pulling out what I know I'm not going to use. Cobalt Blue won't make the cut. Um, New Gamboge won't make the cut. Uh, oh boy. Uh, Pymonite, Pymonite Genuine will take out. Um, lavender will come out. What else do we got here that can go? Ultramarine blue can go out. I know people love that granny. If I pull that out, I need that. I need that cool. Oh no, that's phthalo. Oh yeah, ultramarine blue can go out. Okay, that narrowed that down. Um. Naples yellow, shell pink, buff titanium, and sepia. Those four will stay for sure because those are ones I use a lot in my skin tone as well as Panacone Coral. So that's that. We're at two, four, six, eight, ten. I can only take ten more. All right. Well, I want graphite gray and I want moon glow. Um, I'm missing a hematite. Hang on. Where is it? There should be another hematite color. Where did it go? That's not cool. I lost a tube of paint. That's going to make me unhappy. That's an actual lilac. I found another one. Um. Oh boy. Not cool, guys. Okay, well. I'll find it after. That bugs me. I'll be back. Okay, I digress. I can't find it. It's the Hematite um, Burnt Scarlet Genuine. It's somewhere. I'll find it later. So I've got Hematite Violet Genuine and Hematite Genuine, which are here on the little dart chart. There's the Genuine and there's the Violet Genuine. I'm going to keep the Violet Genuine for now. Um, I need some purples. Let's open this one. I just want to take a boo peek here. Violet Genuine, I do believe, is yes. Okay. I love having this. This helps me with picking out my colors for my palette as well. Um, just makes things a little easier sometimes if I can find the color I'm after. Oh, I like ultramarine red. That's not what I'm after. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep the uh Quinacridone Purple and the Carbazol Violet again, which are the same two that were in the other one. So that's alright. Carrying on here, that means Ultramarine Violet is out. Now, let's narrow down some pinks. So I have Quinacridone Coral in my palette. This is Quinacridone Lilac. So Quinacridone Coral is kind of like my mid tony color. It's a little bit on the pink side, but it's kind of orange. It's, it's a little bit of a funny one in terms of colors. Um, so Quinacridone Violet's going to go out. Um, Quinacridone Lilac I'm keeping in here just in case. Naphthamide Maroon I'm keeping in here. This is a beautiful dark color. It's here on the little sheet. Uh, 
now the mine maroon. I love it. I love that one. Okay. Back to my reds though, because I only have one. So I kept quinacridone coral. Um quinacridone red. It is kind of like a pinky red, especially in comparison to the quin coral. Um quinacridone rose. I didn't even pull out. Alrighty then, which I should have. Weirdness. Anyway. Um not gonna pink. I really like that one as well. Um I'd use the pink over the red so the red can go out. What else do we have here? Thalo turquoise is one of my favorite colors. Sap green. I put sap green. Always, there's a dollop on it in the old palette right here. I used it all the time. I never ever did refill the Green Appetite Genuine, so I'm definitely putting my sap green in this time. Yes, I can mix it out of the other colors that are in the palette, but that didn't seem to matter to me. I wanted it in there. Aussie Red Gold, I love that color. It's kind of like an orangey color. It's easy to make. Orange. What are we at? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. That's exactly 20. So is there anything I want to swap around here? Dum de dum de dum. I'm going to contemplate this for a few minutes and I will be back. Okay, so I did a bunch of narrowing down off the screen. I have Paraline Green and Lunar Blue that I would really love to put in here. And I'm actually going to pull out two of the original six that I thought I was keeping, which is the End and Throne Blue and the Thalo green blue shade and I'm going to put those to the side and I'm going to throw a perylene green and the lunar blue in there. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 21. Crap. That doesn't work. Are you serious? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. No, that's 20. We're good. Okay, so the way I'm going to set up our palette here is I want to put my three skin color, like the colors, I, four colors I use in skin down at the bottom corner here. And then I'm going to put my neutrals beside that. So the graphite gray, the moon glow, and the hematite. And then we'll go the three purples blues and greens and reds and yellows. Except I'm going to... Ugh, how do I want to do this? I don't think I want to do this that way. Okay, yellow, yellow, red. Or red, gold. Okay. Quinacridone gold, quinacridone pink. I don't want sap green there. They neutralize each other and I use them together a lot. No, that'll work. Okay, so I'm going to time lapse this again and we're going to uh, fill our palette. So there we have it guys. I'm going to fill up our palette here with all of the colors that I ended up finalizing on. Again, like I said, I've been using this palette for about a month and I am really, really happy with it. I've dipped into all of the colors multiple times, which is always a good sign when you make your own palette. So I'm going to do some swatching in the following clips. And you guys will get to see all of that while I talk about these colors a little bit more. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the difference between the first custom palette I made and what I decided on and put in during this one. So I'm hoping to use it a bunch in videos and things in the following year. So 2020, I can't believe it's almost the new year. And we will see if I end up changing it again next year. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I will see you guys at the end of the video. Okay, so we've got all of our colors squeezed out onto our palette here. And I've got my little card with all of the names of the colors coordinating to where they are. And we're just going to swatch everything out. So let's go through this. First up here is Naphthamide Maroon. This color was actually given to me at a card making retreat I went to in Ontario about a year ago. I had so much fun. Um, I love those girls with Craft and Gimme. We had a blast. That color's stunning. I'm going to zoom in a little bit um, so you guys can see the color a little better as opposed to just the palette. And we'll do it that way. So our next one is Quinacridone Purple. This is one that was in 
my other palette as well. I use it a ton. It's a beautiful warm purple. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a more concentrated color up here and then I am feathering it out to see the lighter tones as we go further into the color. Next up is Carbazol Violet, which I do believe is um, Daniel Smith's version of Dioxazine, which is probably my all-time favorite purple. Again, it's a lot cooler than the other purple. I use both of them quite regularly. Moon Glow, this color is a very popular one from Dan... Oh, that's not the right color. That's purple again. From Daniel Smith. It is a mix of a bunch of tones. It separates out beautifully. You'll find lots of people love this color, myself included. I can't remember what the pigments are that are in it, but it'll granulate and separate. It's it's gorgeous. I think there's like six pigments or five pigments to make that color, but I like it. Now I've got Hematite um, Violet Genuine. So this is still the Hematite series. It's just got a little more purple to it. Um, these colors are a little harder to re-wet. It's actually already setting up on the top and it's only been probably 10-15 minutes since I first put it into the palette. But it's another heavily granulating color. Then we have a graphite gray which is just like a pencil. Um, I like it. It layers pretty over the other colors. It gives me lots of shadows and depths when I'm being lazy and don't want to layer a ton of colors. Sepia is a beautiful brown. So this is going into those colors that I use all the time that I didn't have in the other palette. There it is. Oh, I'm not on the screen anymore. Sorry, I gotta bump that up. Then Buff Titanium, which is just a color I like to use in my skin tones. Caucasian, um, Asian, African American, you name it. I put a little bit of this in. It's a very opaque color. It's just a creamy tone. Naples Yellow, another staple in my skin tone mixes. I need to make that a little more saturated up at the top end here. So it's again a yellowy, fleshy type color. I never use any of these on their own. They're always mixed. Next up is Shell Pink. This is an opaque color. It's actually from um, Shin Han. I think it's the only, it is the only non-Daniel Smith color in this entire palette, but I use it a ton. Love it. Now we'll go up to the other side. Starting with Nickel Azo Yellow. Then we'll do Quinacridone Gold. So this one is the original PO49 pigment. You can't find this very easily anymore. Um, I have seen it on eBay. People pay a fortune for it. I love it. I have a few tubes of it in my stash when I found out it was going away. I kind of stocked up a little bit because it's something that probably makes it into 99% of my pieces. Aussie Red Gold. This is a newer color from Daniel Smith. Um, it's more of a yellow than an orange, but when you add a little bit of red into it, like the quinacridone coral, which I'm going to do now, it'll turn into a beautifully vivid orange. And I really, really like it for that. I tend to, as you can see, lean toward warmer yellows as opposed to cooler yellows. That's just a personal preference that I found in my style. Quinacridone pink is next. This will be my cool red. You can see how I went with a lot more colors that I use all the time this time as opposed to following like your warm and cool primary colors and all of that to play with. Then we have a sap green which is a color lots of people use. I really like it. It's like a dirty grass leaf green as opposed to being like a faker looking green. I paint lots of florals and things, so those kind of things work out beautifully for me. This is Perline Green, which is more of your dark hunter green. Um, 
Um, three more and we've got all of our swatches done. Phthalo blue green shade. Probably the only like standard color in your typical warm and cool split primary palettes that I use regularly. Phthalo turquoise, which is just pretty. That's why I put it in here. <laughs> one of those colors that I just am putting in because I like it and I'm going to use it so and last but not least is the one I replaced um, my Indian Throne blue with and it is lunar blue this is a heavily granulating super dark color I really really like it and there it is so this is our entire palette, or my entire palette, for my second go at creating my own custom watercolor palette for things I use. Um, I will be doing a bunch of videos with this coming up. I am going to Vegas here in a little while, and this is the only palette I think I'm going to take with me. Fingers crossed that I actually stick to that and don't pack a ton of stuff in my bag because I have a bad habit of doing that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and this kind of lets you know a little bit of what I've changed and where things have come since the original palette. Um, it definitely has changed a whole lot. Hang on, let me zoom out a little bit. Oh, wrong direction. It definitely has changed a whole lot from the one I did about a year and a half ago to the one I have now. This one is definitely more directed at exactly what I use and exactly what I enjoy. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and I will see you very soon for another one. Bye for now.